Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial number 92. In this tutorial we're going to start working on our player movement. So let's go ahead and open up Unity. And I'll make sure Mono Develop is up and ready to go when we need it. Now you might notice things look a little bit differently and that's because I've actually started creating my game the way I want it to look in uh, my web player version. So I've gone ahead and started actually importing all the assets that I'm going to want to use. So I've gone ahead and dropped my player in, which is just a 3D model right now. And in case anyone's wondering, I'm using the CS Warriors and Commoners package from Fro Games, And I can put a link for that in the description. Now it is paid assets, but I wanted to use that because I just really like the fact that it comes with the bazillion animations and tons of customizations. But you can go look on their website and take a look and see if it's you know a fit for your project. So I've gone ahead, I've thrown my little train together and everything out. So I've got my model in. Now, in our earlier version, we were actually creating a prefab for our player character. And if you still have that prefab and you already have the art asset that you want to use for your game, uh, just go ahead and drop your player prefab into uh, an empty scene or just any scene, really. And we can uh, attach the scripts onto it and then just resave it as another prefab or we save it as the same prefab, I should say. But for now, I'm not gonna bother creating the prefab that we had before, uh, simply because I just wanna keep this one script on this character so I know everything that's happening with my character movement is related to the script that I'm gonna be writing now. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and create our new script. So this script is gonna be responsible for not only moving our character, but moving all the other mobs or, you know, basically, you know, all the sentient things in our game that need to move around so uh, first let's just get things at least our character moving in the directions that we want and for my game i really just want to be able to move forward backward uh, rotate left and right uh, jump and probably strafing and for those who don't know it's uh basically sidestepping left to right so let's go ahead and make that script and for now, I'm just going to call it, so, I'm just going to call it movement. And then I'll go ahead and open that up in Mono Develop and make sure I change the name. And then I'm going to go into my input manager. And I'm going to set up the inputs for the controls I want. Now, we already have a jump. And I like the way it's named, jump. Uh, you can set whatever key you want for it. I'm just going to leave it completely like it is at the default. Uh, for rotating our character left and right, we have one called horizontal. And it's already set up really nicely. Uh, if they press the left or right arrow key or the A and D key will rotate them. But I don't really like the name. Horizontal to me just isn't descriptive enough. So for my taste, I'm going to change it. And I'm just going to say rotate player. If I spell it right. Now, if horizontal works, you know, for your game or at least to your logic, horizontal works fine. Then by mean by all means, don't change it. And for vertical, this is when they press the S and the W key, or the up and down key to move. And I'm going to change that one as well. I'm going to call it uh, move forward. Now we don't have anything set up for strafing. So let's go ahead and set that up now. Since I don't really have a fire one, like a lot of these here we actually don't use. And there's really no way to delete them if they're in the middle. You can only delete, delete from the end by making your size smaller. So I'm just going to start overriding some of these. So I'm just going to call this strafe. And I believe that's how it's spelled. And for the description, move character side to side. I'm not going to bother with the negative description. And for my negative button, I'm just going to use the Q key. And for my positive button, I'll use the E. Of course, you know, set them up for the ones that you want. 
And then for the alt alternate buttons, I'm just going to leave them blank for now. And I'm just going to keep the rest the way it is. So I'll just quickly save my project. I'm going to close that down and I just want to keep the input manager open so I can work with uh, the names that we've given them. So I'm going to start with rotating my character. So I've called that rotate player. And for now, I'm going to do them all in update just to make sure they're all working. But later on, we'll want to move them out into other functions to call from update. So we're going to want to check this axis. And if their player is pressing either the keys that are associated with this axis, we'll want to rotate the player according to the key they're pressing. So we can do that by saying if, and we'll throw it in a little block here. And we're going to want to check to see if it's either positive or negative. And we can do that just by checking the math, f.abs, which stands for absolute. And it's just going to look for an absolute value. So basically, if it's negative 1 or positive 1, it means 1. So we want to put in what we're checking. So we'll say input dot get axis. And then the axis we want to check. And I called mine player move or rotate player. And then we're going to want to check to see if it's greater than some value. And I'm just going to say zero for now. And if it is, then let's just throw a debug up for now. And I'm just going to say rotate plus the value. And I'll just cut and paste that code that gives us the value in there. Now I've been asked why I do so much with the debug log statement. And it's uh, sure I could just go ahead and put the actual code in here to rotate it. But I actually like to see what the values are before... I really move on. So actually, I guess we got to attach that to our player now. So I'll take my movement script, drag it up and just drop it on. And I'm going to open up the console and I'll just hit play. Everything starts up fine. And when I hit my keys to rotate, I get a negative when I press A and a positive when I press D. So that works fine. So I'm going to come back into model develop and I'm going to want to start rotating my, my character. Now we're going to be playing with its transform and I don't really want to just keep calling its transform in the update. Uh, we're going to cache the transform for performance. So let's create a, I uh, will make this private and it's of type transform and I'm just going to call it my transform. And then in my awake function, I'm going to assign my transform to hold this game object's transform. So I called it my transform is equal to transform. And then down here, I'm going to add my curly braces to put the block in. And then I'm going to be saying my transform. dot rotate and then we're going to want to pass in on what angle we want it to rotate on now we don't want to rotate on x we do want to rotate on y and the amount we want to rotate on y is going to de be dependent on how long they've been holding that button down so we'll say rotate on y now anytime you're rotating an object you should use the a multiplier of time dot delta time so it's smooth regardless of the frame rate you have and for the x axis we're not going to rotate on that so let's go ahead and save that and we'll go into unity and check it out now it's probably going to be a little slow so and we're probably going to have to add a modifier so as you notice as I hold down the D key it, it is rotating but it's really slow 
So let's add a modifier to this. We'll go back into Unity. And right up here, I'll create a public variable. It'll be of type float. And I'm just going to call it rotate speed. And I am going to give it a default value of 250. And if we look over in the editor, it should pop up right there. So I'm going to come down here and also multiply this in as well. Now, of course, you'll want to adjust the rotation speed according to you know, how fast you want your characters to rotate. So now when we start it up, it's much quicker. It might be a little too quick, but like I said, you can just fidget, fidget with it till you get it the way you want. And that's working. And it seems that we're actually over 10 minutes already, so I'm going to save this and upload it, and I'll start on the next one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.